<laughs> Hello, Cornerstone friends. This is Mr. Matt from Classroom 6 coming to you from my garage slash office at home, which is why I'm not wearing my mask. Um, well, with Thanksgiving coming upon us, uh, it is important to remember, you know, rules of hygiene, you know, and how to prevent the spread of germs. And, of course, with COVID-19, all around us, we have to keep that in mind, too. All right, so today we're going to start by, <clears throat> we're going to talk about doing the dishes, all right, and the proper way to do the dishes. All righty. So, here's a unique, unique assignment that I have found on doing the dishes, and this is a scenario. Scenario where Lucy is washing the dishes. Okay, so Lucy wash. Lucy will wash the dishes. Dishes first. She makes sure the sink is clean. Okay, because you don't want to have a bunch of disgusting crud or whatever in the bottom of your sink when you're trying to clean dishes. Okay, what will she do next? All right, let's see. What will she do next? Let me see. Oh, we just zoomed out. Isn't that lovely? Okay, is she going to make sure the sink is clean? So she might use some uh, Comet or something to scrub it out. You know, some Ajax or Comet, you know, that, uh, that white powdery stuff that you sprinkle. You know, and then you scrub it with a sponge. Okay, so the next thing she's going to do, is she's going to put get the dish rack, get a dish towel, Open the cupboard, turn on the warm water, put it in the dish soap, put the plug in the sink. I'll use it get a washcloth first. Well, I suppose the next action would be to put the plug in the sink. All right, let's see. Well, what do you know? We're going to write about that one because it's a clean box. Okay, Lucy, put the plug in the sink. Now what will she do? She's going to get the dish rack. She's going to get the dish towel. Hmm, let's see. We have a bunch of choices here. Look, same as before. She's not going to put the plug in the sink again. She already did that. Maybe she's going to need warm water. Turn on warm water. Okay. So you're going to um, wash the dishes with warm water. Warm water is, you know, or, you know, as warm as you can stand it, you know, with your hands, or you, you can use, like, rubber gloves, you know, to get the water as warm and close to hot as you can. Number one, it uh, helps you get the grease off dishes, and number two, um, it uh, helps, uh, you know, kill the germs. All right, so, you fill the sink up with warm water. All righty. Alrighty. Lucy will put something in the water. What will she put in the water? Let's see. Will she put a washcloth in the water? Not yet. She's not going to put the cupboard in the water. And she's not going to put the dish rack back in the water. Unless she was cleaning the dish rack. She's got to make the water soapy so that it cleans the dishes and helps get the germs off the dishes. So she's going to use dish, dish soap. Dish soap. Alright, there you go. Okie dokie. Okay, she put the she put the dish soap in. She put all the dishes in the sink. She needs to scrub the dishes. What will she use to scrub the dishes? Alright, the dish towel would be too big to scrub the dishes with. She's going to use a wa wash a washcloth. I personally use a sponge with like a scrubby green side. We'll watch a video shortly after this so you can see. Um, all right, so she's going to use a washcloth. Washcloth. All right. All right. Okay, she rinsed the dishes off to get the uh, food particles off them. 
know, and you shouldn't let the dishes sit out too long after you use them. <laughs> I know, especially on Thanksgiving, you know, everybody, you know, eats uh, turkey and feels tired. Um, you know, they don't want to do the dishes right away. So the dishes probably do end up sitting after Thanksgiving dinner. Um, a lot of that could be that in here. All right, so, but the longer you let the dishes sit, um, like the, the food that's on them and the gravy and the stains and everything, they start to dry and they get, uh, they dry and they get uh, kind of caked up and they get, they get hard. So it's harder to clean them the longer you let them sit. So keep that in mind. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so she, she rinses the dishes off. Where will she put them? Hmm. Do, 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 do. Oh, okay. You know, it's not going through how she washes the dishes. So I guess she washed them already with the washcloth. And she rinsed them off with clean water to get the soap off. Because you don't want to eat soap. You know, you don't want to have any soap in the dishes and eat soap. Because that'll make you sick over a long period of time. So after you wash the dish, you have to rinse it. After she rinses it, she's going to put it on the, in the dish rack to dry. Dish rack. All right. Okay. Lucy wants to push, uh, put the dishes away. What can she use to dry the dishes? She's going to use a dish towel. Dish towel. All right. A nice dry dish towel. Nice clean dry dish towel. Make sure it's clean. Okay. All right, the dishes are clean, the dishes are dry. Where should Lucy put the dishes? Let's see, what are our choices again? Dish rag, dish towel, I already use those. Dish soap, use that. Put the plug in the sink, we use that. Washcloth, we use that. We already turned on the warm water. The only choice left is to put the dishes away in the cupboard when they're clean and dry. Cupboard. Well, all right, those are the steps. Next, we're going to watch a short video on how to do the dishes. Hang in there. <clears throat> All right. So, here we go. Hold on a second. Oops. All right. How to wash the dishes. Well, it's going too fast. Hold on. Let's start over. How to wash the dishes. Start removing any food particles from the dishes. That's that's the pre-rinse. Okay. Uh, some people don't believe in the pre-rinse, but I sure do. I also believe in pre-soaking dishes, especially if they've uh, been sitting for a long time and uh, food has been allowed to get dry and heat up. Then arrange the cups and plates, etc., accordingly. That's optional. You will need a sponge, a dishwashing liquid, and a dish rag, a dry dishcloth. Clean the basin with some detergent on the sink of the basin, which is fine. So she's cleaning the sink just like um, uh, just like the other uh, woman did in the um, exercise. All right, she's cleaning it out. Usually I use like Comet or Ajax or something, but you know, um, she's using dishwashing soap. And she's put some more in, she fills it with hot water. Now she she reversed this step the, in the uh, unique uh, lesson. She, uh, she filled the uh, water with sink and then put the dishwashing liquid. I don't think it matters. <laughs> Just as long as you get soapy water in there. This will make cleaning a lot easier. Start by washing the cleanest dishes first. Yeah, I kind of do that too. You know, to the real caked up soil ones will last. This will keep the water cleaner for longer. Yes, you want to keep the water clean. <laughs> you know, personally, that's what I like to do. I like to keep the water as clean as possible. That's why I, I do the pre rinse. And uh, <clears throat> I hate it when I'm doing the dishes and somebody comes by with like a bowl or a plate all covered with gravy and goop and cheese and they just put it in the soapy dishwash the soapy um, water without rinsing it you know 
If you're here, clean this. You know? <laughs> it's like, ah! You know? Maybe I'm just a little OCD when it comes to that. All right. And it keeps the dishes nice and sportly. We also save water this way. Oh, saving water is a good thing. Your parents will tell you that. All right. <clears throat> Make sure to wash over the entire area of the outside of the dish and the inside of the dish. Mm -hmm. Now, what? Yes, they don't show. They don't show you uh, people rinsing the dish, but um, you can rinse it by holding it under the faucet. You know, or some sinks have like a sprayer. You can like spray it, spray the dishes, uh, rinse, spray rinse the dishes. Then you put them in the dish rack, you dry. Just like the lesson. And do oily dishes towards the end. Oily, you know, cheesecake on, whatever, whatever food is on there. Allow, sometimes you gotta let them soak for a bit so that the food and oil and, you know, gravy and grease and whatnot will come off uh, easily. Okay. Uh, yes, I definitely am a proponent of that. Use the scour on the other side of the sponge to clean the tough areas. The scour, that is the green part of the side of the sponge. It's kind of like a rough feeling, you know, where the other side of the sponge is like a more smooth feeling, you know, like a low teeth would be over there. Rough and smooth. Green side is rough, and that will clean the dishes. Um, that's for really hard parts of the dishes that will come off, like you know, baked on cheese or whatever. You know, you gotta be careful. You don't want to like scratch up your dishes or you know, glasses, though. Once the more you do it, the more used to it you get. Last, do the cutlery knives. Forks, spoons, serving knives, whatever, I mean, serving spoons, serving forks, um, mixing spoons, mixing forks, whatever. Be careful when you put them in soaking water and you, you need to reach for them slowly, okay? You know, don't just jam your hand in there, you know, because you can't always see what's sharp, so just be careful, you know? All right. While the color is soaking, start drying the dishes. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Because the cutlery gets all kinds of baked on, uh, scummy stuff on it too, you know? You have to, you know, kind of like let that soak sometimes. Go over the entire dish with a dry cloth. Good idea. Get all the wetness off. Stack dry dishes from biggest to smallest and pack away in the cupboard. Once done, wash and dry the cupboard. Keep sharp objects faced down in the dish rack or in the dishwasher. If you're going to use a dishwasher, don't have the the knife the knife points pointing up, which you might put your hand on. Ah! You don't want that to happen. Absolutely not. Keep sharp, sharp objects face down to avoid any cuts. Okay. And be careful when you stick your hand in that soapy water. Be careful with the sharp things. Once done, remove the water and rinse the plug. I want to rinse the sink out. Uh, sink out a little bit if you can. Yep, clean, you can clean the basin with some detergent again if you want to. Remove any food particles from the drain to avoid blockage. Yes. Now, a lot of sinks have like strainers in them, like strainer plugs. Um, I wish I had an example. You, know, you, you turn it and it'll plug up. You turn it and push it down, it'll stop and plug up the sink. But when you just like let it rest in the, in the sink drain, it'll catch all the food, the 
strainer. You don't want you don't want a lot of food particles to go down your drain if you don't have like a what do you call that, a garbage disposal in your drain. It's just a regular drain. You don't want the food a lot of food particles uh, to collect in the pipe because that'll be that'll get you like a clog and you know, Maybe you know, you need to have to fix it yourself, taking apart the pipes like I do. Or you uh, call the plumber, which will cost you money. Okay, you don't want to have to spend money that you don't have to. Remove any food particles? Yep. Using a wet cloth to some detergent clean the area around the basin. Yes, I always do that myself. I just use the soap and water, you know, to, before I let it drain out to clean it around the uh, sink or basin, as they call it. Oh, so clean, so clean. Oh, yes, clean out of the drying rack. Yes, because people let underneath the drying rack. Some drying racks have that little plastic sheet under them, rubber sheet, a plastic sheet. You should clean that periodically, too, you know. Um, to clean that every now and then because it gets all, you know, uh, grungy and stuff, you know. Okay. Prevent the spread of germs. You now have a nice sparkly clean, you know, nice sparkly clean dishes. And a lovely clean sink area too. Well, thank you very much. Alrighty. Stay tuned. Next we're going to cover how to do the laundry. So stay tuned. Okay, Cornerstone friends, here is a, another unique, unique assignment, and uh, we're talking about sorting laundry, okay, and let me see if I can zoom out just a tad there, all right, so when you're sorting laundry, you have to sort laundry before you put it in the washing machine, and uh, if you guys remember, I did a video a while back of me, you know, doing laundry in my washing machine. <clears throat> and I talked, I talked about sorting whites and lights and colors. Um, my washing machine is uh, not working properly right now, so I'm going to have to just do this uh, unique, unique lesson. <laughs> All right, so. Okay, so what goes in whites? Let's see. We've got to pick the clothes that go in the white basket, the light colored basket. And the dark colored basket. Let me see if I can zoom out just one more time. Alright. So, um, let's go to the whites. Alright, what's going to go on the whites? Uh, this dark shirt? Let's see. Nope, nope, not that. Okay, let's see. And this white shirt, white on white, white goes in the white. Yay! All right, let's see what else. This pink dress. Nope, the pink dress will make the white turn pink. You know. All right, so these white pants. These are white short, shorts. Okay. Alrighty. All right. You want to keep the whites, wash whites with whites, and not colors, so that the colors from the colored, from the colored clothes, don't um, wash with the white clothes. Clothes, and the the color from the colored clothes bleeds into the white clothes. You don't want that. You know that'll mess up your white clothes. Okay. Same thing with darks and lights. If you have really, a really rich dark colored clothing, you know, like I don't know, like dark royal blue or something, and you put it in with like, um, like a tan sweater, okay, um, that the dark royal blue might run into the tan sweater. The color, the colors might mix like that. Okay, so let's see what goes in the lights. Okay, so these blue jeans, I'm assuming that's what they are, are probably 
free and dark. Let's see if they go in the lights. Don't! No, no jeans are too dark. Let's see, what goes in the light basket? How about this light pink dress? Okay. What else goes in the light basket? Um, maybe this light blue shirt? All right. The shorts are probably too dark, but let's let's just do it anyways for kicks. Nope. Nope. Not doing that. All right. Let's see. Out of these light pants. There you go. All right. What's left? The darks. These all look like dark clothes. Let's check it out. Okay. Yay. Yay. And yay. Yeah, so um they probably, you know, I'm um, you know, hundreds of years ago before washing machines were invented, and washing machines are just a, a, a wonder, you know, they're just like a, a, a great thing to have, you know. Um, because washing clothes by hand was a long, hard job back like hundreds of years ago. We used to wash clothes in the river or in like a you know like a lake where they would fill up a you know uh, like a like a tub like a huge bucket type thing like a, a laundry tub with water. And then they have to scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub with a thing called a washboard, which they invented eventually. They had to scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub. And scrub. It was hard work. And they had to let it dry. Dryers are a wonderful thing too. That's why it's important to use the washer and dryer correctly. All right, because you don't want to break them. You know, because it's a real drag when you break them. You have to end up going to a laundromat, and that costs money. Or you'll have to clean them the old-fashioned way that I just described, but washing them by hand. All right, next we shall watch a video on how to use the washing machine correctly, so stay tuned. Okay, let me move my circle over here. All right, now this is a video on standard top-load washers. You load them in from the top, not the side. Okay, consumer basics, washer operation. Here we go. These things will be covered. Loading the washer, and the Okay, sorting the laundry, you get your whites, just like on the other side. Make assignment. You your wipes. You got your. Um, you got your <clears throat> your wipes. Your col light colors and your dark colors. Select them out so the colors don't run together. Place a load of sorted clothes in the washer. The washer can be fully loaded but not tightly packed. Clothes should be. Well, that's interesting. It looks like he's putting like. Uh, a white sheet with um, uh, like a light colored sheet. And it's probably not like a really good idea. <laughs> like I said, it's not a good idea because the colors might <clears throat> might run through and they might bleed into each other. The uh, colored fabric might uh, lead some of its uh, dye into the white fabric. I don't know why he's doing that video, but oh well. Load the top of the basket. Do not overload the washer. Overloading can cause poor cleaning. Over uh, more than that, more than causing uh, poor cleaning, it can also um, break the washing machine because the washing machine might might strip the gears or the belts. Might make might make the belts and the gears that operate the washing machine break, and then the washing machine will be broken. 
and your parents would be so upset. <laughs> or if you were living by yourself or with roommates, you would be upset. Or your roommates would be upset. You wouldn't want that. Right. Don't overload the washer. Avoid washing a single item. If only one item is washed, the machine may become unbalanced and the cycle not finish. So Alright, that's another thing. You have to like put things evenly. Or say that this circle is the inside of the washing machine. You have to put your clothes evenly all around the circle of the washing machine. Evenly distributed. Not all on one side. Because then the washing machine will be like Okay, and it'll move around and it'll break, and then again, people will be upset. Some washers will have dispensers. Detergent, bleach, and fabric softener are added to the appropriate dispenser. The manufacturer's directions should be followed for the amounts. The size of the load, soil level, water temperature, and water hardness should be considered when adding detergent. If the washer does not have a detergent dispenser, the detergent can be added before or after loading the washer. Once the washer is loaded and the detergent... There's another thing, okay? Um, don't add more than a... Uh, <clears throat> don't add more than a cat full or like, you know, a cat full of, like, you get the twist-off cap in the uh, detergent bottle. Don't add more than like one cap full because then, you know, it's too much detergent, you know, uh, might not all wash out or, you know, it might get all foamy, and, you know, who knows. Just don't use too much. Detergent and additives have been added. Close the lid. The washer will not agitate or spin with the lid open. On some models, the washer will not fill until the lid is closed. On many models, the lid will lock during washer operation. A cycle needs to be selected according to the type of load or fabric. Okay, so there are different cycles there. There's permanent press, which is like things that aren't cotton, you know, things that are made out of like an artificial uh, like rayon, you know, uh, nylon, and stuff like that. Permanent press, delicate. Be like sweaters and stuff, you know, or really delicate shirts, you know, buttons that will easily pop off. Um, regular, okay, that's just like regular clothes, like jeans and t shirts, sweatshirts. Uh, hand wash, I guess that, I'm not really sure what that cycle is. But these are all the different cycles. You're going to like turn the knob and click it on the right cycle, okay? Don't turn that knob after you hit the start button, okay? Because then you'll strip the gears, okay? Again, you don't want to break the washing machine. Each cycle has a preset cycle time. The amount of wash time can be selected by moving the knob to the target time. The cycle selected will determine the wash and spin speed. This information can be found in the owner's manual. Water temp must be selected. The spin speed. Oh, yes, you also have to uh, select the temperature of the water. Now, if you have um, clothes that are made out of like um, <clears throat> synthetic fabrics, like things that aren't made out of aren't made out of cotton, like rayon or nylon, or like wool, okay, uh, if you use hot water, those things might shrink. Like sweaters are made out of wool, and they might shrink in hot water. They'll also shrink in the dryer. So you have to think about that. You want your clothes to shrink. So hot means shrink for some clothes. You don't want them to shrink. Okay. May be a selectable option, or it may be part of the timer. The owner's manual will have details. On this model, the water level should be selected according to the size. Okay, that's another thing. Um, water level. Uh, on the uh, less expensive washing machines, you have to select the water level, okay? If you're just washing a small load, you don't need, you know, you put it on, you put it on, you can see the small load over there, you know, 
just washing a few clothes. You don't want to, you don't want to waste water and use all this water just to wash a few clothes. You know? All right. Eyes of the load. The wash and rinse temperature should be selected according to. So there you go. There's the temperatures of the water: cold, cool, warm, and hot. Okay. Again, hot will shrink some uh, pieces of clothes that you have. You have to look on the label, like on the back of your clothes, you know, to see, you know, if you can wash in hot water or not. For the type of fabric. Once the cycle, water level, and water temperatures have been selected, the washer can be activated. On this model, the timer knob is pulled out to start the washer and the washer will begin filling. Okay, some washers have a button that you push after you after you turn the dial to select you know, what wash cycle you want. Some washers have a button that you push to start. Uh, this uh, this one, you know, you, you turn the knob and then pull it out. Okay, once again, after you started the washer, don't turn that knob again, okay, because it will strip the gears. Break the washer you want. If the washer has a detergent dispenser, the detergent will be dispensed at this time. The washer will fill to the water level selected. Once the washer has finished filling, the washer will begin to agitate. The length of the wash cycle will depend on the cycle selected. If a liquid bleach is used, on most models it will be dispensed in the last few minutes of the wash. Once the wash portion of the cycle is complete, the washer will drain the water. Next, the washer will go into spin. Rinse is next. The washer will refill with fresh water. Fabric softener will be dispensed at this time. The washer will again fill to the water level selected. Once filled, the washer will begin to agitate. The length of time for the rinse is preset by the timer. Once rinse is complete, the washer will drain the water. Next, the washer will go into a final spin and the cycle will be complete. Always refer to the owner's manual of the appliance for specific model information. The owner's manual will have information that covers installation, operation, safety, maintenance, and warranties. Very good! All right. Thank you for listening. In this section, Oops. these things. Thank you for listening and participating in Chorus on Friends. And next comes the song. Hi. Okay, Cornerstone Friends. So this is um, a song by the Traveling Wilburys. And I like it because it's uh, it talks about how everything's going to be all right. Even in this troubling time, COVID-19 and all that stuff. Everything should be all right, okay. Well, it's all right. Riding around in the breeze. Well, it's all right. If you live the life you please. Well, it's all right. Doing the best you can. Well, it's all right. As long as you lend a hand. Sit around and wait for the phone to ring at the end of the line. Waiting for someone to tell you everything at the end of the line. Sit around and wonder what tomorrow brings at the end of the line. Maybe a diamond ring. Well, it's all right. Even if they say you're wrong, well, it's all right. All right. So that you gotta be strong. It's all right, as long as you have somewhere to lay, well it's all right, every day is judgment day, maybe somewhere down the road a ways at the end of the line, you'll think of me and wonder where I am these days at the end of the line, maybe somewhere down the road when somebody plays, purple haze. Well, it's all right, even when push comes to shove, well, it's all right, all right, 
As long as you got someone to love, well, it's all right. Everything will work out fine, well, it's all right. I'm going to the end of the line. Don't have to be ashamed of the car I drive at the end of the line. I'm just glad to be here, happy to be alive at the end of the line. It doesn't matter if you're by my side, at the end of the line I'm satisfied. Well, it's all right, even if you're old and gray. Well, it's all right, you still got something to say. Well, it's all right, remember to live and to live. Well, it's all right. The best you can do is forgive. Well, it's all right, all right. Riding around in the breeze. Well, it's all right. If you live the life you please. Well, it's all right. Even if the sun don't shine. Well, it's all right. We're going to the end of the line. We're going to the end of the line. Going to the end of the line. Well, I hope you have a good Thanksgiving. This is Matt signing off.